Thank you, Mr Speaker, and it's a pleasure to follow my honourable friend from Reading East, who spoke so eloquently about the fears and worries about, uh, for, of his constituents, um, and many of my constituents have told me of the same challenges and fears that they face if Brexit goes ahead. Now, I campaigned to remain in the EU, and my constituency voted to remain. Um, and I also voted against triggering Article 50 because I felt that there was so much work to be done to establish exactly what Brexit would mean for this country, knowing that the promises given to Leave voters were untruths and, as we well know, are undeliverable. There was no mention by Leave campaigners of the conflict between Brexit and retaining the Good Friday Agreement. And there was no, nothing on the impact of leaving the EU on our rights at work, on our environmental and consumer standards, and the impact of losing the significant benefits um, from UK's full membership of and influence in bodies such as the European Medicine Agency, the European Aviation uh, Safety Agency, and so many more. Now, Mr Speaker, 28 months later, we've got no further than documents containing broad principles with massive gaps. It's not a deal, but just a framework. And I will not vote for such a pile of vagueness, and I certainly won't vote for no deal either. Mr Speaker, the lack of the long-awaited immigration white paper is just one of many legislative gaps in the issues on which we're expected to vote on next Tuesday. Now, on immigration, EU migrants are integral members of our society and are vital to our economy. For those here now and, who, and for those who may want to come to the UK in the future, the Prime Minister's deal offers nothing concrete on which they can plan their future lives on. Thousands of my constituents are citizens of other EU countries. They work as carers, construction workers, they work for the NHS, for the massive hospital, hospitality sector and for many other sectors, across the private and the public sectors. This morning, I met my constituent, Annette, a German national. She's been here 30 years, married to and mother of UK nationals. She's apoplectic at being accused of jumping the queue, given what she's contributed to the UK, not only in taxes as a higher rate taxpayer, but because her professional working life has been spent working uh, in teams of highly skilled nationals of many EU countries, improving services, providing millions of pounds of benefits and international prestige to our public and our private sectors. And what about those whose future plans are based on freedom of movement? There are many reasons, Mr Speaker, that young people voted so strongly for Remain. Uh, and a major factor of that was the freedom to work, study, live and love anywhere in Europe. For young people, whether they choose to travel or not, in addition, remaining in the EU is the key to prosperity for their futures. On top of the rising costs and lower wages my children's generation already face, I am not prepared to commit their future to the recession that the government's own analysis clearly predicts. And if another referendum were held now, another 1.8 million young people, and that's today, have now reached voting age since 2016, and they want to say in their future. And I have no doubt that they will follow uh, the voting preference uh, of, of, of uh, the 18-year-olds in June 2016. Now, on the economy and jobs, there isn't a, a business or a sector that won't be worse off if the UK leaves the EU, and at least the government now has the grace to accept that. The broadcasting and audiovisual sector, for instance, just one. But it's important to my constituency, to many of my constituents who work across West London in the sector. The UK, Mr Speaker, is Europe's leading international broadcasting hub, home to more cross-border channels than any other EU country. West London has grown as a hub for international broadcasting, taking advantage not only of the skills base, but the unique range of languages spoken in London, which has come about partly through the freedom of movement that EU membership has brought us. The EU is setting up a digital single market because of the importance of frictionless movement, trade and similar reg regulations. But the country of origin rule means that to broadcast into EU countries as a, a broadcaster needs to be based in an EU country. So Brexit will mean the growth in the sector will be killed stone dead and the UK's competitive edge will be lost. Companies such as Discovery, based in my constituency, have already announced plans to leave the UK. They cannot wait for the uncertainty of the next two years and, like others, are gradually moving investment and staff. 
There is nothing in either the withdrawal agreement nor the political agreement to give any comfort to this major and currently growing sector. And the same is true, as other members have spoken in this chamber yesterday and today, and will do in the next few days, uh, nor to many other sectors, which are important to all our constituents. So in closing, Mr Speaker, what was promised in 2016 by the Leave campaign cannot be delivered, and even Cabinet Ministers now admit that. And this deal, this deal is much, much worse than the deal we have now. In the EU, a full voting and influential member of all the many European arrangements and organisations that make for stability, and the benefit of being a full player in the largest economic bloc in the world. With no majority in this House for the Prime Minister's deal, nor for no deal, then the only option available is to put the vote back to the people, with all the implications of each option clearly set out.